A liminal space image can be defined as a location which is a transition between two other locations or states of being. Examples of this can be empty hallways that are usually bustling with people or places like desolate gas stations and hotels. These types of places I just listed off are usually overlooked by an everyday person, but they are quite literally a transition between two other locations. For example, gas stations are usually small trips you make when traveling in between two places, and hotels are a place to stay at while awaiting your next destination. Because of this, it can be unsettling or weird to see a photograph of somewhere that you often forget about. It's almost like these places are frozen in time and only exist when they're at your convenience. With that said, that seems to be the general definition and understanding for what a liminal space is, but what's very fascinating about liminal spaces is that there's dozens of different explanations for why they make someone feel uneasy. When looking at a liminal space photo, there's a sense of familiarity, almost like you've been to the place in the image before in a dream or a past life. There's also a huge nostalgia factor that comes with photos of liminal spaces, especially for North American people. For instance, this photo of an empty scholastic book fair can be classified as a liminal space even though it's not really a location that's in a transitional period. This photo is a liminal space because it's empty, nostalgic, and stuck in time. For someone like me who grew up in the early 2010s and went to many scholastic book fairs, this picture makes me feel nostalgic, melancholic, and it makes me wish to be a kid again. My final point for this long introduction is that a liminal space can't truly be defined, but there's millions of photos that can be categorized as a liminal space for a variety of different reasons. With that said, liminal spaces can appeal to almost everyone who's grown up in the early 2000s. Because of this and the overall weirdness and unsettling vibe you can get from looking at a liminal space photo, these types of pictures are very popular on the internet. The most popular liminal space photo is the infamous backrooms picture. I'm not going to get into the whole lore of the picture or anything because it would take forever to explain, but what's interesting about this picture is that the origin has never been found. Thankfully for other popular backroom and liminal space type photos, there are real life locations behind their strange pictures. Personally, I often ask myself, where is this in the world? Is this even a real picture? I think it's time to actually dive into what the video is about. So if you're still watching, be sure to give the video a like because it's just a nice thing to do and it means a lot. My first entry of the video is this popular photo of what's commonly associated with level 188 of the back rooms. This seems to be a hotel or an apartment with an interior garden section, but for whatever reason, there's a ceiling above everything. Because of this, there's a huge lack of natural lighting, which causes this place to seem shadowy and dark. Aside from the overall emptiness of the picture, there's also a window from a room that shows the silhouette of two people. Initially, I thought these shadowy figures were just edited inside the picture to add another level of creepiness, but this is just the reflection of whoever took the image. With that being said, the quote-unquote windows level of the back rooms is actually the Holiday Inn at Terminal 4 of Heathrow Airport in London, England. Yes, this place is a hotel at an airport, and many people have showcased different angles at the hotel, and it's still pretty liminal and very strange to look at. This is one of the first popular liminal space and Dreamcore photos that I remember seeing in 2020 whenever this genre of photography first went viral. Personally, this one actually gives me a big comforting feeling, and I wish I could just be there to explore this little strawberry village. Anyway, at first glance, you would think that this place of strawberry huts was once used for a children's TV set or even a location in a video game, but this place is actually a restaurant in Indonesia. The restaurant is called, and I'm gonna butcher this so sorry for all my Indonesian people, Asib Strawberry Kad Kadangora, and this place actually seems really cool, and the food seems pretty good. I'm not sure how popular this entry is, but I have seen pictures of this floating around when looking up liminal spaces. That said, this place is the Lantern of Madison Senior Living in Lake County, Ohio. At a certain point in people's lives, you may need the assistance of others because your body just can't work on its own. 
so that's when you get moved into a senior living center. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you feel about living your final days on Earth in a giant liminal space, many people are moved into an indoor neighborhood filled with fluorescent light skies, nature, and green carpets that resemble grass. The Lantern of Madison Senior Living is a giant liminal space and it's very interesting to look at. This infamous picture of an empty bookstore that has the words THE END on the wall is one of the most popular backrooms photos. There's many different stories and myths about this picture, but unfortunately, I can't seem to pinpoint the exact location of this store. From what I know for sure, this is an abandoned Borders bookstore. Borders was a book, DVD, and coffee place, and the entire store chain would shut down in 2011 for you know, a variety of reasons. Anyway, there's actually many different angles of this store, but the pictures have their own differences. In this shot, which is the most popular picture of Borders, you can see the classic The End on a back wall. In this picture, you can see The End is Near, which means this photo was probably taken before this one. There were many Borders bookstores that would shut down, and because of this, there's a lot of abandoned locations that look this same. So if you know which one this was, be sure to comment. I'm not sure how popular this photo actually is, but I have a feeling that I've seen it in a liminal space compilation before. With that said, my first clue when trying to find the location of this very uninviting liminal space was this Reddit post. The title reads, Fun Zone Farmingdale, New York. After watching many home videos of Fun Zone on YouTube, I can safely say that this is not Fun Zone. The actual Fun Zone in New York doesn't have an indoor train from what I could see, and the Jungle Gym was quite different. Something cool about the Fun Zone in New York though, is that they actually had the Rock of Fire Explosion Band there, which is pretty rare nowadays. Back to the origin of this image, I just reverse image searched the picture and it led me to Valley World of Fun in Pleasant Valley, West Virginia. After looking through dozens of pictures of the now defunct Valley Worlds of Fun, there's no trace of the indoor train and indoor jungle gym. Along with this, Valley Worlds of Fun has these types of lights from the ceiling, while this picture shows a more thin stripped type of light. Just when I was ready to give this entry up, I found this image in an article about a reopened amusement center in Farmingdale, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Fun Zone got a nice remodeling, and we got him. We got him. Look at the top of the slides in this picture. Now if we go back to the original photo, we can see the same little archways. This tiny find was enough for me to look into At Play Amusement, the newly reopened amusement center in Farmingdale, New York. When looking at the first picture of it on Google, it's the indoor train and the indoor jungle gym. So yes, this picture was actually taken at where Fun Zone used to be, and this picture was also taken at some point of At Play Amusement's short life. Unfortunately for At Play Amusement, they didn't have a very long run, and I couldn't find any information as to why they even shut down. Anyway, on the topic of talking about liminal spaces because that's what this video is about, here's Kylie, and she's gonna talk about some. Dead malls are definitely a subcategory of the backrooms that I think should be more prevalent. The image we're going to be discussing the origin of is this empty arcade. We can see it contains what appears to be a gumball pinball machine, a claw machine with purple basketballs as prizes, a second claw machine, and some racing game. It was taken at Lansing Mall in Lansing, Michigan by this Reddit user. They made the original post of the image on r slash dead malls back in December 2019. Other photos of the arcade have popped up here and there on the internet. Despite being posted to r slash dead malls and looking rather solitary, the mall still exists. I found this image of a huge chest with checker pieces as well, just thought it was cool and the carpet that is in the arcade appears to be in other parts of the mall as well. However, based on reviews, it seems it doesn't have much life left in it and may unfortunately be on its way to closing down. This photo reminds me of the way that bathrooms tend to look like in dreams. I thought I was alone in my recurring, unsettling, and repulsive bathroom dreams until I found out a while back that they're actually a super common phenomenon. When the stalls don't have doors or aren't tall enough, the toilet is too tall or too short, everything is overflowed and repulsive, and it feels like some discombobulating maze. 
I know there's no toilet present and it's a pool, but it just gives off a similar vibe. This photo was taken at Sanatorium Ingle in Ukraine. Sanatorium in this sense is not like the tuberculosis ones back in the day. Sanatoriums in Ukraine are more like hotel spas, sometimes for people with medical conditions, but other times it seems to be for anyone who wants like an aromatherapy type experience. This one in particular is considered a resort hotel on Google. We can see the famous backrooms photo on their website under the types of treatment section. The website is in Russian, so translation might be iffy. But the pool is described as pool with cascading waterfall and that they use methods of balneotherapy. According to the National Institutes of Health, balneotherapy is a set of methods and practices which, based on scientific evidence, use medically and legally recognized mineral medicinal waters, muds, and natural gases from natural springs for therapeutic purposes inside the facilities of thermal spa centers. The architectural design of the building is also pretty liminal and I was able to find another picture of the liminal pool via Google reviews that you can see here. Going through all of the photos, the entire place looks like a liminal fever dream. Following the pool room's energy of the sanatorium angle, I always thought that this photo was fake either a very good render or Photoshop, and I was honestly surprised to learn that this is an authentic photo. It was taken at the Hamamatsu subway station in Japan during a flood. There's an article I found from September 2015 about the floods, and it appears that the flooding was called by tropical storm Itau. However, the article that I found is more about how clean water is in Japan and not the actual flooding itself. And here is a photo of the station in its dry state. Water-based liminal photos are some of my favorites. I love the pool room so much, and that made it great to find out that this backroom photo is real. This photo may look like your typical backrooms jungle gym, but it has some dark, musty lore. It was taken at Rainbow Funhouse in Torquay, England. The building was an old converted church that opened in 2001. What started as a bright, promising future for this establishment ended as an abandoned, decrepit place with a bad rep and fire damage. Its history of TripAdvisor reviews tells most of the story. In 2012, this person said they'd recommend the play center for anyone with younger children. As their entry prices were very reasonable and described the food as basic but adequate. Then only a year later in 2013, Jared said they were charging parents entry fees even if they weren't participating in any of the activities and that the staff was lacking with keeping the children supervised and safe, which is a recurring complaint amongst reviews. This woman said her son had a fall that caused a broken arm and that there wasn't any staff on the floor the children were playing on during the time of the incident. The downstairs area was for younger children while the upstairs was for older children, but it seems to not have been enforced and this person claims their two-year-old daughter was hit by older children that were invading the toddler area. Someone added in the review that their five-year-old had actually asked to leave after 10 minutes of being there. And here is a direct quote. The whole place smells of damp mold and we and needs cleaning. We have been there several times and the first time there was poo all over the floor and the girls blew. But the playing apparatus are great and like I say, our children love going there. So smells like we, but their children enjoyed it. And there are reviews saying it wasn't that bad of a place. So it was maybe just your average run of the mill musty play place. It closed in 2017. However, in 2019, the building caught on fire. Residents near the building told police they had seen children with spray cans around the area, but I couldn't find a confirmed cause of the fire. I believe there is a rumor that someone died either in the fire or like an accident while Rainbow Funhouse was still open, but I'm 99% sure that's thankfully nothing more than a rumor. On a positive note, the building sold in 2021 to a couple that restored it into a beautiful, gigantic house. So hopefully if you ever no clip into the back rooms, you end up here and not in Rainbow Stank House. This photo of what seems to be the end of a high school hallway is one of my favorite liminal space pictures. I find the picture to be very comforting, nostalgic, and memorable. There's been many times where I've stared at this image and wondered what lies beyond the school doors. It looks like a rainy day outside and feels like you're looking at a past memory from when you were a kid leaving school. Anyway, finding the location of this picture was quite a fun and tedious task. That said, my first lead was a Reddit comment that said this picture was taken at the Bridgewater Hillside Intermediate School. Moving forward, I couldn't just take the Redditor's word because they didn't add any additional proof. 
so now it was time for me to start digging. My first effort was to look this school up on Google Maps, and then I would try and find this exact exit from the outside. Unfortunately for me, there's not a street view angle on the school's property, but there is an overhead view. When looking at the picture, you can see a large dumpster and a patch of grass in the distance, so I tried to match all of these characteristics up with the overhead angle. Eventually, I settled on this spot for being the outside you can see in the picture. You can see the patch of grass, and you can also see the concrete street that lies in front of it. Now, you could argue that the dumpsters don't match up in the same place, so I decided to get a little more proof. I looked up Bridgewater Hillside Intermediate School on YouTube and found this video. The video is from 2011, and it's a pretty wholesome montage of teachers and students having fun at the Bridgewater School, but we'll get back to this in a second. Looking back at the original picture, you can see a brick wall that sticks out from the exit. Not only this, but the brick wall is topped off with some sort of metal lining. Going back to the video I just mentioned, at the 5 minute and 49 second mark, you can see a group of teachers standing outside the school. And in the background, you can see a sloped brick wall that's topped off with some metal lining. This picture was definitely taken at the Bridge Raritan Hillside Intermediate School in Bridgewater, New Jersey. The pool rooms are a very popular subcategory in liminal space photography, and the backroom's lore, level 37, which is also called sublimity, is all about the pool rooms. Before I go any further, I'm sorry to break anyone's hopes of this dreamlike place existing, but the pool rooms don't exist in real life. The popular pool rooms images and 3D renderings were originally made by a New York artist called Jared Pike. I don't know how long he's been making this type of liminal space art, but it's become his overall brand in recent years. I looked back at his older post on Instagram, and he has many hidden gems for liminal space art. There's plenty of ways to support Jared Pike, such as following him on Instagram where he embraces the newfound appreciation for his pool room artistry, or you could even buy his physical prints of the pool rooms on his website. Someone once posted this photo to Reddit with the caption, This area in my school courtyard always gives me such a weird feeling when I walk alone in it. The post would get nearly 30,000 upvotes on r slash liminal space, and I think the top response really sums up my thoughts toward the picture. The sky looks like a generic skybox in a video game, and even though there's shadows that exist in the picture, everything feels very... frozen. With that said, this was an easy find as I dug through many Reddit comments and eventually found out that this was taken at the Kiski Area High School in Leechburg, Pennsylvania. This dreamlike picture of a very real crusty crab has been floating around the internet way longer than the liminal space movement even gained popularity. From the very smoky and smoggy resolution of the image to the empty and surreal nature of a real life crusty crab, this is some sort of nightmare fuel for the kids who grew up on Spongebob. Anyway, I traced this picture back to a cooking website that talks about a real life version of Spongebob's crusty crab set to open. The Krusty Krab restaurant in Ramallah, Palestine would open its doors sometime in 2014, and is also the hotspot for many more Spongebob fever dream pictures. This restaurant seemed really cool to be at, and I wonder if they sold those rainbow colored burgers from that one Spongebob episode. I, I always thought they looked really good. And I hope I'm not alone on this, but I always wanted to try the food at the Chum Bucket. It honestly didn't look that bad. It's actually amazing! I actually have some sad news about the real life Krusty Krab, as the place got shut down in 2019 for reasons I couldn't find. There has been speculation that Nickelodeon never gave the restaurant permission to use anything Spongebob related, and it's easy to see why. If a real life Krusty Krab were to ever open up in the early 2010s, I don't think Ramallah Palestine would be the first location that comes to mind. A redditor called BlackBunny2424 would go on to say that the restaurant is now a coffee shop. So, F's in the chat. Indoor playgrounds are a common place for liminal space pictures to be taken. The one on screen is very similar to other liminal space playgrounds, but this one is located in an IKEA in Inaloo, Australia. There's nothing too interesting about this entry, but I find any picture of this playground to be very surreal and barren of any happiness. Wow. 
the colorful pipes image was taken at a Google data center in Changhua, Taiwan. These pipes are a part of a water cooling system so that the data centers and servers don't overheat and work properly. I probably sounded like I don't know what I'm talking about, and that's because I don't. Unfortunately, liminal space photos that are taken inside houses are really hard to locate. Some of my favorite liminal space pictures are ones like these, and I'll likely never know their true location. With that said, this one is one of the more popular liminal space photos that's been taken inside of a house. I'm not too sure how to go about this entry because I don't want to possibly dox the people that live in this house, but anyway, here's a little showcase of the entire inside and outside of the house, and you can try and find it for yourself on redfin.com. And while on the topic of liminal space houses, I've always wondered where the origin of images like these came from. Luckily for me and everyone watching, you're about to find out from the legendary YouTuber Adrian Gastly. This image depicting a rainbow and a house on a hill is often lumped in with many other strange looking liminal spaces. These images are very off-putting and almost like they're from an alternate reality. Upon closer inspection, it's easy to tell that this image is actually a collage of multiple different images, which is what gives it that strange look and is probably contributing to the odd feeling that it gives off. But where does it come from? Well, it's actually a piece by the artist Gabrielle Traverset. Gabrielle often makes collage images in Photoshop as well as graphic design art. The image dates back to at least 2019, which is well before it blew up as a liminal space icon. Gabrielle has also made many other notable liminal spaces such as these images. Her art is so dreamlike and weirdly beautiful. To end the video off, here's a liminal space picture that I could have sworn visiting in my own life. I think I came across this picture on Pinterest, and I had a little freak out because it looked very similar to a small water park I visited as a little kid. I specifically remember the slides being blue and being lined up like the way they are in the picture. I also had a vivid memory of this bullet slide, but I had to make sure that my suspicion was true. The water park I remember this being at was this place called Dry Gulch. To my surprise, the water slides at Dry Gulch are quite different from what I remember, so no, I have not been to the water slides in this picture. And even if I still believe that I've been to this picture in real life, that would be impossible because this is a pool at the Krishna Hotel and Garden Restaurant in India. If you made it to the end, I just want to say thanks a lot. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff outside of YouTube, and that's why it's taken me so long to make this video. I'm so glad I got it done, and I plan to make this an ongoing series that features more liminal space locations and more features from YouTubers in the liminal space uh, community. I have so many cool upload ideas, and it's just going to take time for me to release this longer quality content. Most importantly, I'd like to give a shout out to the YouTubers featured in this video, such as Kylie and Adrian Gastly. They will be in the description and pinned comments, and they make really good content, so you should check them out. With that said, you can always support me on Patreon for early uploads and exclusive content such as my new music reviewing series. Welcome to what I am listening to. And I have a lot more planned for that over there. There's, you know, other perks and whatnot, but you know, I'm gonna shut up. Thank you for watching me as always, and shout out to the Patreon members, Cher, Misazaki, Sinful, and Josh S. You guys are the freaking best.